There's a lot of bull crap that's floating around the internet, and I have some opinions on bull crap. Why is everything I want to see always upside down? Made in Thailand. Them folks in Thailand are all right. Oh, yeah. This is... Whoa. Look at that. I'll tell you what, I didn't miss putting this thing on and taking this thing on and off. I guarantee you that. Welcome back. Uh, I think we're going to start the video off uh, with a little bit of a uh, brake caliper rebuild on the old Corvette. Been having a hard time with these front calipers, not going to lie. Uh, they were leaking. Specifically, it was leaking at the uh, the compression fitting port right here. I couldn't, I bought the right washers online, but they just, they wouldn't work. So I ended up buying a couple of calipers from O'Reilly, some rebuilt Delco Moraines. They, they leaked at the pistons badly. They were just junk. And I bought them today, put them on the car. They leaked immediately. I took them right back. It was it was pretty awful. I think these front ones were leaking, and I know they were leaking from this uh, port right here, but I think they were leaking uh, from the uh, a little bit from the pistons as well. So uh, anyway, so enough of all that. I'm going to go ahead and just uh, rebuild them. I got a couple of kits, but the brakes, well, they've been a challenge. Uh, it's just been, it's just been too many years and they, it just needs a lot of work. You know, initially in one of the previous videos, I'm like, ah, it'll be fine. Nope. <laughs> it's not fine. So anyway, let's dig in and rebuild this caliper. All right. I really don't know what all is going to be in this video this weekend, to be honest with you folks. <laughs> well, we're going to give it a shot though. See what we can do here. Do I have the right socket? Not starting off in a stellar fashion, are we? So when I rebuilt the Mercedes calipers, I uh, blew the pistons out with air. So I'm not sure if that is the proper method here or if they screw out or what. All right, good old service manual here. Remove the end of the brake hose. Yep, mm-hmm. Separate the caliper halves, done. Uh, remove the two small O-rings from the cavities done. To free the piston boots so that the pistons may be removed, push the piston down into the caliper as far as it will go, which is completely opposite what we were trying to do. Insert a screwdriver under the inner edge of the steel ring in the boot and using the piston as a fulcrum, pry the boot from its seal in the caliper half. No, caution, use care not to puncture the seal when re removing the pistons from the caliper. Well, it doesn't make much sense anyway. If you're gonna rebuild them, aren't you gonna replace the seal? So yeah, let's try that. Well, that was easy. Yeah. Oh man. <laughs> That's nasty. That's pretty funny. Oh yeah, this is. Ooh. Look at that. How about that? Mm, put that on a biscuit and eat it. However, if I just do a precursory inspection and I look at the bores, they're per. The bores are. I just wiped it with my finger. The bores are. They're fine. I know you probably can't see that, but they're not rusted and they're fine. That's because they are sleeved. They are stainless steel sleeved. These particular calipers that I bought, I, as I recall now, I, I bought the ones that are that were sleeved. You can, I don't know if you can see the delineation between the cast metal and the, the stainless steel sleeve. I think we are, we're real, we're definitely on to something here. We're doing the right thing. So we have a really large O-ring, apparently. That's interesting. I don't know if these kits have O-rings. They might be the lip seal kind. I'm just making this up as I go along. Let's see what we have here. There's the dust seal and then four and then 
Yeah, they're lip seals, that's for sure. And this is an O-ring, which is actually in really good condition. I'm halfway tempted to just clean this thing up and then just put it back together and see if it'll work. I mean, look at that. Nothing wrong with it. You know, it's, it's the Dot 5, it's been in there forever, so. The, uh, the nasty stuff that's in there is what's left over from the Dot 3 crap. Uh, let's see. And then, you know, it's just, it's just, it just, it's just good. It's, it's not bad at all, really. Other than this nasty crap here. There is some of that nasty crap on the side of this piston right there. That might have been causing a problem. Now let's get this other one out of here. Using the technique from the service manual. Yeah, you got to get underneath the metal bit. You could actually, you know, you could actually save the, uh, these seals. According to the service manual, it says, be careful and do not damage the seal. Or whatever. But, uh, I mean, these brake calipers, just, they just don't have any miles on them. Not really. They just got a lot of sitting up time, don't you know? Yep. More nasty crap. I guess these pistons are aluminum, aren't they? Let's set this aside over here. Let's take this one apart. Man, look at that nasty crap in there. <laughs> look at all that. Unbelievable. Actually, it is it is perfectly believable. So, so I'm I'm really I'm really glad we're doing this. I can't emphasize that enough. Uh, let's pour that nasty mess into the nasty garbage can. Yeah, that's actually pretty easy. I saw Dalton on Pope Gone. Pole barn garage doing this the other day. I was like, you know what? I probably need to do that too. Wow. Alright. And the little O-ring between the two halves. And by the way, yes, super clean dissolves silicon brake fluid perfectly fine. Don't you know? Brand new, look at that. Hmm. That brush had a little grease on it. Talk about nasty. All right, so the uh, the the brake the uh, the brake port that goes between the two halves, I'm going to need to get some brake clean actually down inside that and shoot it out with that red little red uh, fitting. So I'm going to take this outside and do that real quick on uh, on uh, both halves. So I'll be back here in a few minutes. I uh, I went to town on that thing. Let me tell you what. Got nice uh, stainless steel sleeves in there. I think you can see that. And uh, I brake cleaned the passages here. Basically, I super cleaned the whole thing. Then I rinsed it out with water and then I blew it out with air. And then I hit it with some more brake clean to remove all the water. That is looking pretty good. All right. I'm going to do the other half real quick. I'll be right back. I have wasted more brake fluid in this brake job than I have ever, than in any prior brake job that I've ever done. 
All right, so we got these two uh, brake calves done. Uh, I think up next, what I'm gonna do is clean up the pistons and the springs. Gonna clean up that next. This will take a little bit. So this one place where that stuff was built up right in there, it did cause some corrosion in this aluminum piston and it's pitted right there. I guess it's where it was, I guess this was probably sitting down and it, and it puddled up there over the years. Uh, this car did a lot of sitting up, so is what it is. Uh, the sealing surface is the rubber, not the piston itself. It'll be okay. Got our two halves cleaned up here. And we got our springs cleaned up. Oops. And we got these two pistons cleaned up and these two springs. And completely forgot to clean those. Okay, we're done. Uh, with the cleanup process, that is. And uh, here's all the old seals and O-rings. They look good, but they may be they may be enlarged. I don't know. But uh, regardless, we're going to downgrade our uh, calipers, mainly because I'm impatient, and I want to put my car back on the road. And these were readily available locally. There's the little bitty O-ring that I oh, thankfully I didn't toss the other one out of there. Okay, we've got one little O-ring for that over there, one for over here, two lip seals here, two lip seals here, four of these dust cap things. All right, so I'm uh, just reading down through here the original instructions. Do not use mineral-based solvents to clean brake parts, but okay, fine. Check the fit of the piston and bore using a feeler gauge. Clearance should be as follows, one and seven eighths inch bore, uh, plus or minus or anywhere from 0.0045 to 0.010. And the one and three eighths inch bore is uh, 0.0035 to 0.009. I guess that's plus or minus on that. So anyway, let's, let's see how bad it is. And then if it's off, we'll just ignore it. What is seven eighths, by the way, in scientific talk? 0 0.875, 0 0.881. 0.879, of course this is El Cheapo measuring tool. 0.876, tolerance is uh, 0.0045 to 0.010. 0.881, 0.0075, 0.0075 to 0.018. That's seven thousandths there for that one. So that's fine. All right. Now well, let's see what we got here. Uh, hmm, which way does that go? I, I guess the inside lip goes down into the caliper, but I better make sure the lip on the seal should face toward the large end of the piston. Be sure lips are in position. Be sure lips are in position groove and then, and do not extend over the step in the end of the groove. I know how to make things complicated, don't they? I could have explained that much easier. This is why you need Grammarly. Oh my God. If I ever see that commercial again, I'm gonna do something drastic. Install the piston assembly into the bore using piston ring compressor tool. Great. So what we're going to do is just put a dab of brake fluid on the piston channel where it goes. And then we're going to put a little dab on the seal itself. So you got to make sure the, you know, the crack in the seal faces towards the inside of the caliper. And uh, it was a little off there, so. There we go. Always rebuild brakes with dirty hands. I like to do it that way. Now I'm not pressing on the part that seals against the, the cylinder bore. I'm pressing on the inside part of the seal. It takes a little finagling to get that in there situated correctly, but you'll know it when it seeps in there. Of course the O-ring is much easier to do. And in hindsight, you know, I, I, there's a lot of bull crap that's floating around the internet. And I have some opinions on bull crap. And I think the bull crap says, oh, you must, you must, you really want to upgrade to the O-ring style because that's longevity. That's the really high end upgrade. You know, that's the really good thing. You know, that's what you want to do. Really, you can't be a true enthusiast unless you put your O-rings in there. Well, I got another theory. I got another theory that says bullshit comes in a lot of forms. 
especially when folks make money. Now, if I was to go make a rubber seal, which one of these you think would cost less to make? This round one that has no deviations other than, it's, it's a perfect torus, like a donut, right? Or this one, which has a, a nice lip, goes up like that, cross like that, down like that, and has a groove inside. Which one do you think costs more to, to make? I don't know, that's just my theory. I doubt it if it's true or not, but I think really it's, they push the O-rings because they can make, because they can make them cheaper and they can claim that they're way better and that way they charge a whole lot of money for it. So they make money hand over fist. Now, that is a merely a conspiracy theory. Make a, may be completely wrong, but it's mine and I'm sticking to it. Because the main culprit of the leaks in these calipers was the cast iron bores. They, I mean, originally, they didn't have stainless steel sleeves in them when they were made back in the day, you know. But here, nowadays, if you go buy them, they're, they all have stainless steel. You had to ask for stainless steel calipers back in the day. I doubt very seriously that any of these rebuilt calipers are not coming with stainless steel uh, bores. Anyway, that's just a theory. Again, place spring in bottom of piston. That was easy. Uh, lubricate the seal. We did that already. Install the piston assembly in the bore using piston ring compressor tool J22 629 or J22 639, whichever you have. You know, you may not have any of them like me, but anyway, as shown in figure 541. Ooh, let's look at that. 541. Where's that at? It's just a round thing that it's like a piston ring thing on a car, probably, on a car engine. Use care not to damage the lip, the seal lip, as a piston is pressed past the edge of the bore. Assemble the boot in the groove in the piston closest to the concave end of the piston. The fold in the boot must face toward the end of the piston with the seal in it. In other words, do it properly. Let's put a little more brake fluid in there and uh, lubricate the uh, bore. Now, do you really need a tool for this? I don't know. That's another thing. Probably with, with just with the O-ring set up, you don't need the tool, you know? That's, that's probably just about cheap and, and easy. That's what it's all about, cheap and easy. All right, so if I was to uh, try to do this without a tool, tuck it in there like that, all the way around. Surely, surely someone has done it this way before. All right, I was able to get it down in there. I just uh, moved the piston off to one side, just a tiny bit, and just kind of tucked that seal in and just worked my way around it. It wasn't a big deal, not really. I mean, you, as long as you're careful and you, you know, be nice and everything. Uh, the instruction manual says, you're an archer, you're a tool, and all, you know, well, that's for the GM dealership, right, back in the day, so it'd be, it's fine. Anyway. So here's the uh, the dust seal, and uh, we're gonna put that on there. But I need something. I need like, a big socket for that. I'll be right back. Screw it. Let's just pound it in there. When I say pound, I mean lightly tap. How about that? I'm gonna make sure it's level. <clears throat> I'll make sure it's level all the way around. Probably being overly critical. I would imagine any job, well, you don't want to be arrogant, but this day and age, any job that I do on a rebuild is probably, well, it's, it's probably better than what you find elsewhere because, you know, I'm being careful. And a person that rebuilds 500 of them a day in a factory somewhere is not. But then again, they may have, they probably got a machine to do this instead of somebody who's really paying attention. All right, we got our uh, pistons in there. Let's uh, put the two halves together. So uh, we got a uh, little port right here. Put some uh, brake fluid on that. Put some brake fluid on our O-rings. Time for the marriage, as they say. I guess we ought to put the bolts in. And let them be our guide. How about that? Let's uh, let's start the bolts. Whoops! Let's start the bolts. Give me a hard time. 
And then, uh, you know, make sure those O-rings are still seated properly in the right place. Doesn't stand up, by the way. Huh. Excellent theory. Poor execution. That'll be a comical intro, for sure. All right, no harm done. All right, let me look up the torque rating for that. Caliper housing bolt, front disc brakes. Corvette, 130 foot-pounds. That probably got us in the ballpark. I'm gonna put this thing in a vise and put the big torque wrench on it. Let's just sneak up on it. This is 50. All right, clearly the, the impact gun got us that far. 80. And I tightened down on one of them more, more than I did the other. <laughs> That's 100. Oh, yeah, that one over there is tight. It's real tight. There we go, 100. I'm guessing 100 is good enough. I really don't want to rear down 130 foot pound on that bolt. I really, I just don't want to do that. If 100 don't seal it, I don't know what will. One brake caliper, four pistons rebuilt. I'll do the other one off camera and we'll put them on the car tomorrow morning. All right, we got uh, both calipers rebuilt. And uh, the second one was pretty much the same state this one was in. Let's get them mounted up. Oh, well, you know what? We gotta have pads. Ha <laughs> ha! Let me go get them. All right, it's important to have brake pads in your brake calipers. I can't reinforce that enough, actually. Does the little pin go on the inside of the caliper or the outside? I don't know. I'm gonna put it on the inside. It's gonna be unsightly otherwise. All right, uh, no fluid in it, so compressing with your fingers is easy. Just slip it over the disc like that. And I got my bolts hiding out up here in a cubby hole on top of the control arm. Then you just gotta find the hole. That's not it. All right. You know, without these automotive YouTube channels would be boring as all get out. All right, let's put a hose on there. Consequently, the uh, O-rings, these, these brass crush washers that I bought from, these came with that set of calipers that I returned to O'Reilly. But I kept them because they're way thicker and much more compressible than the Corvette crush washers I bought from Corvette Central. The ID is the same, but they're a lot thicker and a lot more compressible. And these, the ones that you get from the parts house, they seal better. Anyway, I've, I've had this one on here once, but I'm gonna reuse it because it's still in pretty good shape, so. This thing has been leaking so much, my level of confidence is really quite poor. All right, five eighths. For the millionth time of tightening up brake hose, All right, I'm gonna put the other uh, brake caliper on. I'll be back in a little bit, and then we'll hopefully start to add fluid and bleed brakes. All right, got front brake calipers on. Time to start over. Hopefully uh, the master cylinder didn't get so drained that, um, you know, that we gotta bleed it again. Let's just hope. I did do a little bit of vacuum pump bleeding on the rears earlier, so. They're down just a little bit. All right, you may think this uh, looks uh, a little foolish. Uh, I got the back of the car jacked up. And uh, I got a, uh, an angle finder here on the master cylinder. Looking at 1.4 degrees here. Got the back of the master cylinder higher than the front. This is to make the air bubbles that are still trapped in the master cylinder uh, cylinder inside there. The air bubble is going to go up here, and as I pump it, it they will more readily be evacuated. Um, this is because I got no percolation 
on the back. I do on the front, but not on the back. That's our goal, okay? All right, got myself a long stick. Don't really want to get in the car in this particular situation. I do have the front wheels chocked, so I'm gonna press this brake pedal, see what we get. All right, see, I got percolation on the front, right? And I got good on good good percolation on the front. Not getting it on the back though. Of course, during all the last couple of days, I did let the fluid get pretty low in the uh, master cylinder. I got the back to percolate the other the other day. So anyway, I, the other day I got to notice in the front calipers were just leaking like crazy, and. Uh, I bought new ones, it didn't work out well. And then I rebuilt them yesterday, and the front seems to be perfect. Now the back is, well, they're not leaking, but the back's not percolating the way I want it to. However, the brakes seem fine. The pedal is awesome. Uh, so this is the way we're gonna play it. I'm just gonna button this up, put the car back on the ground, carry on with trying to get this thing, you know, finished up. I wanna need to get the hood back on, and there's a few other bits and pieces we've gotta get back on this car. My goal for the weekend is to shut the hood on this car and call it done, right? <laughs> that being said, uh, that, that does leave the brake light inside the car, which had stayed on during all of this. Is it gonna go out? I don't know. Under the scenario where it, let's say it doesn't go out and my brakes seem to be fine and they're not leaking, then I'll worry about that later on. But for now, I'm trying to get this project finished and finished in my mind is the hood is closed. Anyway, let's move on. All right, so I've got to put this panel on here that we took off earlier uh, so that we can get the uh, accumulator in there. That's all done. So uh, I uh, cleaned it up a little bit, put a coat of paint on it. It's out of sight anyway. I just put a little uh, extra coat on it to keep the rust down. And uh, now I got to figure out how this thing goes in here again. <laughs> Let me get my light. All right, I took the... Uh, wheel off make it a little easier on myself hopefully yeah, I think we've almost got it need something need a, need a thing we're not, we're not pull on that there we go there we go there we go. all right I've got it up in there now all we can do is put position it and put the bolts in All right, I'm gonna uh, put this side panel on real quick. You've seen me done that before, it's not a big deal, just screws on. And uh, let me get that on and then let's move on. All right, let's get the spare tire in this thing finally. Let's drop the lock and break it. So we got a P205-7515. And I trusted the internet, it said this was a work. So the original Tire was a P195 80 15. Anyway, it's a lot taller, but this is just about the same dimensions. The numbers are a little different, but they're just about the same dimensions. Anyway, so this is a uh, just, just a cheap tire. Uh, Road One by Cal, it's a Calvary AS by Road One, whatever that means. I don't know what the just a cheap tire. Out of curiosity, where is this thing made? Why is everything I want to see always upside down? Made in Thailand. I think folks in Thailand are all right. Hopefully. Okay, this is not gonna be fun. Oh. Could you imagine doing this on the side of the road? Yeah, just wedge it in there, it'll be all right. We need a little more. Need a more, uh, man, that's a long boat. I guess it'd have to be to put the stock tire in here if you had a flat. Oh, yeah. All right. Well, let me get something to tighten that up with. I can't recall what the size was. It would make sense to be the same size as the lug nuts, don't you think? How about that? No, I've never changed a flat on a C3 Corvette on the side of the road. But if I have to, I won't spare. Let's see. Uh, I think this just, you know, 
it just fits over that. It doesn't really do anything except keep people from messing with that bolt. And I had to restore this little thing. It was rusted solid. And uh, it's just got a little pin that retracts. And uh, should we put the lock on this side or that side? I don't know. Put it on this side, I reckon. I don't realize it matters. There. It rattles. It's supposed to rattle? Maybe I need to read the instructions. All right, I pulled this. I stretched that spring out just a little bit. Let's see what that does. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it still rattles, but whatever. It's on there. It's not going anywhere. And I won't be able to hear it rattle over the sound of the side pops anyway, Harris. So let's move on. All right, let's uh, see if we can't get this. Uh, I'm going to call it a cold air intake, but you know, it's like an air duct. So, well, that's what it is. It's a cold air intake. Not that it's not that the air is like really cold, but you get it. Okay. So I don't know what happened to the uh, the little spring clip, little nuts over the years, but they they went away. So I got some Dorman from O'Reilly, and that should be fine, hopefully. I think you gotta split it apart like that. And slide it. Interesting. Let's go ahead and get one of them started, since I see the hole there. your butt in there you rascal. Now yeah, we got to tighten that down. Yep, yeah, we're a little off. Amazing what a little bit of light will do for you. Yeah, I lost the little hex headed bolts that go on that, but you know what? No one's going to care. Now yeah, it's starting to look like something again. Let's keep the momentum going. Don't be, it's not time for a break, Harris. All right, and the next piece is probably the piece I should have put on first, but whatever. You know, what we should probably do is loosen the compressor. Let's see if that gives us enough. Wow, okay. Well, I just did that completely wrong. Not surprising, really. Not surprising. Just it's been so long since I, you just forget things, you know? Huh, like I was saying earlier, when you put this cold air intake together, this has got to be the first piece you put in. It just won't work otherwise. I got a lot of experience with this. Man, you talk about crammed in there. <laughs> hmm. That's right, I forgot about this. This this overflow hose actually goes above this. I forgot about that. Over the years, I had always complained that taking this flex hose off between the that and the carburetor was always a pain in the ass. Well, it's gonna continue to be a pain in the ass, even more so since I have that steel clamp on there now. It's a little witness mark on the fender where these bolts went, so I know I'm getting it in the right place. All right, now we can put the top part on. Because everybody knows that's the right way to do it, except me. All right, so I uh, had this little string here uh, set up to do something else. But uh, anyway, we're gonna use it to uh, pull a rig, big rope into position for us. If I can tie a knot. How do you tie a knot anyway? Do you guys know how to tie knots? I'm not good with knots. One of my buddies is a boy, is a, uh, what do you call it? Eagle Scout. He can tie them real good. Anyway, doesn't matter. I'm just doing this all wrong. It doesn't really matter. Well, that's just stupid. All right. So, I'm gonna do that. And then, 
We're going to throw it over there. We're going to span a couple of, uh, probably three of the rafters, hopefully. Hopefully, I got enough rope here. And uh, anyway, you know, we're going to dangle the hood over the car and do it that way, don't you know? So that's the plan. That, that went about as well as expected. Let me get a ladder. Note yourself, do not fall off ladder. That just ruined everything. All right, so I got, got it spanned across three of the rafters. Yeah, it's about center too. Got lucky on that. So uh, what I'm gonna do is hang the hood on this affair right here from its uh, little latches up there. I, this is the way I took it off before anyway, so. Now you need three people to put a hood on a Corvette, in my opinion, uh, but I only have a couple. I figure we can hang this thing up here and just let it dangle. And that should be like, you know, really easy to uh, bolt up to the car that way. So older I get, the uh, easier I think I like for things to be. All right, thanks to the lovely wife and lots of rope. <laughs> we were able to get the hood bolted up. Basically what we did was we, well, we, we, we tried two or three different things and failed and eventually figured it out. Uh, I had this one piece of rope connected to the latch and I had the hood pretty much vertical Then I moved the car forward and just don't ever do that. It just doesn't work. You cannot have the hood vertical and install it on the car. Uh, it'll interfere with the condenser, which we prevented. We, we, we put blankets and stuff like that down, so we didn't ever touch the condenser, but when you do this, the hood has to be at this angle to attach it properly. There is simply no room for it to be vertical in this uh, cubby hole up here uh, in the front. So we have, uh, right now we have this rope here attached to the rafters up there, and I've got it tied off so it won't fall. So thanks to the, uh, the better half, uh, and it took us about an hour to get this accomplished, but we've, we got it bolted up. And uh, anyway, let me go ahead and get this. Um... You guys know how to do this? All right, so uh, up next, I'm gonna go ahead and bolt this uh, hood prop up. I got all the hardware here, I left it in the hood. And uh, so you can't you know, really see Jack in there. So I'm gonna go ahead and bolt this thing up real quick so we can prop up this hood properly. Prop up the hood properly? Say that 10 times real fast. You know, I trained Boy Scouts, by the way, on how to tie knots. We got a hood, it's up in the air. Question is, will it latch? All right, still haven't uh, attached the, uh, the light yet, but we may have to tweak this hood, so. Well, I got rope in the way over there, come on now. All right, let's just see if, uh, you know, Things are going to play nice. Seem to be. I uh, there was witness marks on the hinges, and I put them back where they're supposed to go. So you know, this gap over here seems a little wider. But then again, you know, 1978 and all. So you know, you get it, right? Let's put this hood on, Leroy. All right. Is that good enough? Yeah, that's fine. Actually, I do. I think I recall this one being a little closer over here. So there's little holes right here. They, if you didn't know this, there's a little access hole. I'm putting my finger through it right there. In case, you know, like this cable breaks or something, you can get a uh, something in here and you can actually pop the hood. That's how you get a hood open if, you, if this elaborate cable mechanism goes awry on you. Uh, how about that? And my alarm went off. Here goes nothing. How about that? Mm. I think we uh, spent all our luck points on that one, aligning that hood perfectly straight out of the gate. <laughs> Man, that's pretty awesome. Okay, let's put the light on the hood. Let me go do that, I'll be right back. Uh, got a bulb in there, but I think it's a mercury switch type deal. And uh, it's not illuminating. I'm gonna fix that later. I ain't gonna worry about that right now. Not going to worry about the underhood light just yet. That'll be a nice little sideline, easy project for me to do later. 
Uh, what I want to do is put the breather on this car and take it for a test drive, test the brakes, and sit in air conditioning. All right, do not crank AC bracket. That was to, you know, remind me to tighten up the bottom bracket, which I've already done, so. All right, it's time for this lovely little thing. I'll tell you what, I didn't miss putting this thing on and taking this thing on and off. I guarantee you that. I need new ones. I don't have one for that side. I hadn't had one that side for that side for years, actually. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I need to put that on one day. But I'll order it here before too long. And uh, we'll get that going. That's just not going to work. Plus, this has got rips in it anyway. Be gone with ye. All right, so on the flex hoses, I've got to put a longer overflow pipe here from the radiator to the bottle to give me some slack to be able to move that out of the way to put the flex hose in there. That's a minor thing, not really concerned with. Put our gasket back in place. So we'll run without the hoses for now. What guard is your cold air intake? Well, I don't know. I'm just putting stuff together. All right, let's crack this some bitch up. indications uh, since the hood is on and I'm hearing you know different noises and whatnot I've got a little rattle in my in that you hear that and I got a uh, side pipe over there rattling a little bit that's all right that's easy stuff ain't no big deal hey look at that we got a hood that is totally cool but the P.S. to resistance, or whatever that French word is, I can't say. See that down there? Brake light is out, baby. So that means we got equalization in our proportioning valve. And I will say our brakes are working quite nicely. I'm very, very happy. I'm a happy camper today. Look at this beautiful fall day. I mean, what's not to like? You got your Corvette restoration done, 99%. Got a beautiful fall day, and we got air conditioning. Ha <laughs> ha! Hopefully, hopefully it didn't leak all out, you know, <laughs> in the past week since I uh, finished it up since last weekend. Yeah, she's cooling on down. That's for sure. Yeah, boy. Mmm, that's nice. Especially this vent right down here. It blows in a good place. But we still need an alignment. Hadn't done that yet, clearly. And the tires are 2009. They're too old. They got to be changed out. Uh, but we have a flat. We got a spare. So there you go. Hopefully the uh, jack is still in its resting place from... So, oh yeah, let me tell you one thing I do have on order is a one of those idle solenoids that they put on cars in the 70s when you had air conditioning and an automatic transmission. And what they did was it, it kept the RPMs up uh, on your engine, especially at idle. Uh, if you had your air conditioner on, you're sitting there idle at a red light, and the automatic transmission the old A6 compressors would really bog the uh, engine down, you know. They work two ways. Uh, you can either use it as an anti-dieseling solenoid or you can use it as a an idle solenoid, or I guess an idle maintainer, you know. Anyway, so I've got one on order, and uh, I'll have to fabricate a bracket for it because they never put them on the 
standard transmission cars, but there's two holes there right next to the carburetor, so that's going to be a future project. So I'll set this thing up for 900 RPM idle, and then when the AC kicks on, I'll set it to where you know it's going to drop down by say 200 RPM or whatever it is, and it'll keep it at 900. So we're gonna we're gonna do that. That'll be in in a few days, and uh, that'll be a future project for us. So here I am at idle, at a red light, in neutral. Actually, I take that back. I just put it in neutral. Oh no, there it goes. See there, it's dropping down to 600, six, uh, 650 to 700. And with this camshaft, that's really that's really not enough. This cam is kind of lopy. Not sure if you guys can hear that side pipe rattling. I got to do something. About Well, there you go, folks. I think we are going to call this mechanical restoration complete for the 78 Corvette. I uh, appreciate you guys sticking around uh, during all of this, uh, but this is something that uh, really needed to get done and uh, made a lot of videos on this car over the last several months. And uh, I think it's been beneficial for both for me and hopefully for you as well. Uh, I learned a lot about this car that I just didn't know. I owned it for 27 years, but you know, there was a fair amount that I didn't know. And so I learned a tremendous amount. So that being said, uh, I've just got a couple of little minor things floating around here. Got to fix the light underneath the hood. Got a, that side pipe over there rattles, just banging on something at low idle. Not sure what it is, but we'll figure it out. It's not, not a big deal. Air conditioner works great. <laughs> Gotta love that. Uh, she sounds fantastic and runs so well. The power delivery is so smooth and just it's just effortless going down the road. It's just it's just fantastic. The transmission is fantastic as well. Uh, the Silver Sport five-speed TKX can't beat it. Uh, the top end kit that I put on here uh, from from Lance Stillwell at uh, Motorsports Unlimited. If you need a top-end kit for your Chevrolet, call Lance. I'm telling you, he'll fix you up. That being said, only a few minor little tidbit things to do on this car, and uh, but I'm calling it done. <laughs> I am ready to get this monkey off my back. So that's all for now. You will. You'll, oh, by the way, and you'll note that the car is over in this side of the shop now. The Cadillac is over there now, and um, guess who's going to get? air conditioning work next so stay tuned for that all right folks i appreciate you guys stopping by the channel don't forget to like share and subscribe and if you'd like to be notified whenever i release a new video don't forget to click that little bell down below you guys have a good one and remember to enjoy driving at last your c3 corvette